information and errors related to those items in the cache. 200 errors or 200 related messages are usually good, meaning when they're in the cache. 300 usually mean, or 300 or 30x usually means redirect related items. And those are usually not in the cache and need to be loaded each and every time. So the files that are here, access log, cache log, store.log, maintain useful information. Squid.out tells you the last time Squid started, the fact that it created the directories that it uses to conduct its business. Again, for a deeper analysis of Squid, look at Linux CBT Proxy Edition. The version of Squid studied in, in that edition of Linux CBT may be 0.1 off, but basically, by and large, over 99% of the directives are identical. Just perhaps bug fixes or slight differences between the version examined there and here. So Squid really hasn't changed in well over a decade significantly. So with that said, we are connecting through the proxy server, and there are different ways to enable or disable rules. So for example, if we had a host on the DMZ that we attempted to connect through the proxy as it would currently fail because of the way we've written the land users rule. So if we wanted all users to be able to connect through the proxy, we would adjust the rule by grouping multiple subnets instead of simply 192.168.75.10. We could make it 192.168.75.10 space the other subnet and that would allow us to connect through. Let's just indicate the rules that we've written or the rule that we've written, which is ACL LAN underscore users, that's the name of our rule, which is assigned the type source, which accepts source IPv4 addresses, such as 192.168.75.0 slash 24. And then we follow that up with HTTP access, which is a keyword used by Squid to mean provide or deny HTTP access, depending on what follows. We indicate it to allow access to LAN users, the grouping, and then it's followed by a deny for all other users. We could also allow one user and deny another user. It's quite an, a possible way to implement Squid. For example, let's deny our local system but permit everyone else on the subnet. So fifth task would be to deny 192.168.75.10 but allow all other users from the local subnet. So we'll need a rule set which resembles the following. ACL LAN, let's call it bad users source 192.168.75.10 would indicate the distinct host. We could optionally follow it up with a 32-bit mask or just leave it be. And then we also need to indicate, and let's just include this on one or in one block so we can easily copy and paste it. So this would deny the user. We need a rule which re resembles the following. HTTP access deny ACL LAN bad users. We need to ensure that these two entries come before the allow for the subnet. And this will match on dot ten, deny dot ten, but permit other users. Let's return to the squid directory beneath etc. We'll nano squid.conf and we'll find ACL LAN, which is what we currently have in place. And that's LAN underscore, that is ACL space LAN underscore. So right before, let's indicate that we'd like to deny. So to deny specific hosts because again like a firewall squid processes these items on a first come first serve basis so what it sees is what it processes first and the first match is what will be allowed let's navigate again to land user and paste our item using control shift v so this will deny dot 10 and then permit every other host and we can test any other host doesn't need to be a graphical host by simply using a shell based interface to a remote system and setting an environmental variable. We'll save the changes then ex execute service and we'll just exclamation service because it's in our history. Now let's do an error. Let's just double check our rule set here. 
sure that our rule set looks right. And in fact, HTTP access deny ACL LAN bad users, that looks fine. And we've inadvertently placed an underscore between ACL and LAN. We could name the ACL with a prefix of ACL, but then we still need a prefix command of ACL. Let's try it again. And that's more like it. We'll PSEF grep squid. And it's up and running with the upper D option. So as dot ten, let's try to use the squid server. It should deny us. We'll try to refresh linuxcbt.com. Squid throws an error. Let's try to hit some other sites like Google. Another error. Let's try to hit our RPM repository. Ditto, another error. However, if we connect to another system on our internal network, let's control shift T. SSH is root over to Linux CBT Media 1. We'll connect using IPv6, the 6 to 4 address. That's what was ascertained from DNS. And once on this remote system, we know it has WGET installed. And WGET supports proxies. By the way, any program which supports proxies, such as FTP or HTTP based programs, can be set to use Squid because Squid supports those protocols. In the case of WGET, you need to export a variable. It's called HTTP underscore proxy. If we set grep HTTP, what's returned includes variables or one big variable which contains HTTP but not the HTTP underscore proxy variable. So then we'll export HTTP proxy equals setting it to the IP address of the proxy server followed by the port 3128. Then we'll follow that up with a set grep HTT underscore and there we see it set. So now when wget executes it will use this variable to determine which proxy server to use. Now we need a document, we need to try to access a document and that will cause Squid to fetch a document for us. So let's wget HTTP www.linuxcbt.com index.php. This is the default page. Now we see we've got index.php, which represents the Linux CBT website. But don't trust the document we've downloaded. Consult the proxy server. So let's navigate to var log squid. And we can tail access log where we'll see the dot 100 box TCP missed getting www.linuxcbt.com index.php. We can try it again. The byte size is included as well for each request. And we should see a second entry. It was again a TCP miss. For items that are cached, the subsequent downloads will be much, much faster, return to the client much, much quicker than for items that are missed. Otherwise, roughly the same transfer rate because the client was forced to visit the net would be returned. Again, be prepared to have a lot of disk storage. But by connecting using that HTTP proxy variable using wget, we've proven that you can allow a set of users from your subnet and deny one or more users from the same subnet. Now we did mention earlier that there is a client named Squid Client. Which Squid Client tells us that it's in a place accessible to root. This client can be used to test your proxy server. Using Squid Client with no options returns the possible options. And sensible options include G, which allows you to send a certain number of requests to the target server or document. So a squid client G three times HTTP www.linuxcbt.com. This will fetch your default page three times, returning statistical information regarding the transfer rate of the document. This is a great way to test whether or not your proxy server is caching content. In the case of this document, it appears that it's not because each return comes back in roughly the same number of milliseconds. And in each case we see it's just under 450 thousandths of a second. 
So let's try to get another set of content from the default repository 75100RH5. And let's just get the full URL and copy and paste it instead of memorizing it. This will attempt to get the default page three times using the proxy server's help. And as you can see, the millisecond response roughly the same each and every time. But you use the client again to test getting or gaining access to content. You can use it to authenticate using HTTP authentication. You can also indicate a specific port, a specific host to retrieve a URL and other items. Now one last point regarding squid, squid configuration and that is you can alter the port. You can change the default port if 3128 does not suit your needs. Search for 3128 in the main documentation and you'll see the uncommented directive HTTP underscore port. This directive if switched to let's say 8080 which is commonly found will allow your users access using 8080 regardless of client type. And let's also find LAN users. Because we want our local system to be able to gain access, we'll turn off the rule for dot .10. We don't want to deny dot .10, so we'll just comment it all together, which will cause squid to match dot .10 to this rule, allowing access. So we'll save changes, service squid reload, and once squid has reloaded, let's just echo doll sign, we'll try to access content again. And this will check against the rule set. And usually if it takes this long, it means it works. So you can reload the server to avoid having to restart it altogether, which would kill existing connections. So again, just to recap, Squid is a proxy server. It's a caching server. It caches content, HTTP, FTP, HTTPS content. And it supports a wide criteria of ACLs, a really large criteria. Just consult the documentation. Also look at Linux CBT Proxy Edition featuring Squid. It is highly customizable, used in many production environments, and can make your bandwidth utilization come down and it's very stable.